time with Jeshwit J. That's me. Thank you for clicking on this video and making yourself a priority. I am Denise. We dish everything healthy lifestyle, fun food, recipes, hacks, whatever you want to call them, but most of all, friendship here on this channel. If that is something you need or want, hit that subscribe button and join us here on YouTube. But if you're returning, welcome back. Today, it's a little bit of a meal prep. We do meal preps here once a week. It's just a compilation of recipes. It's not technically a meal prep, but it's how I meal prep. So today we have, let me think, I do all during the week, so I'm trying to remember, two ingredient dough, calzone, and strawberry shortcake. And there's a cold brew. Uh, I've made this cold brew several times, but since I was making it for the boys, I thought I'd just make it again and show you how easy it is to make your own cold brew. Don't be paying those high prices when it's very easy to make. You just need some cold water and some coffee. That's it, simple. I didn't get to making the pretzel bites, run out of time. I wish all I had to do was make videos for you guys, but I do have lots to do around here. So we'll get to that maybe next week. So let's start on this meal prep and roll that footage. All right, I was requested to make two ingredient dough calzones. I thought I did it here on the channel, but you know what, never pay, you know, you do it again. This is, you know, my, my take may be a little bit different on it. Now my two ingredient dough is different from most two ingredient doughs that you may have seen online. I combine many recipes. So I have a cup of self-rising flour, which I use all purpose. One cup, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of salt. That's my base. I mix it all together so it's all, you know, combined. And then I add half a cup of non-fat Greek yogurt. And mine has to be extremely well drained. I don't like it wet. An egg and a teaspoon of yeast. The active quick yeast, not the other yeast. It's the sap yeast. It's just, it's just, they call quick yeast. I like the, the taste that that little bit of yeast gives. It doesn't make it rise that much because I don't really let it rise. I mean, I just made it. I, I, th I mean, you guys know how to make dough, so I didn't really want to take the time to make dough. So this is a uh, four. This will make four calzones. So what we do now, I'm going to be frank with you. Um, my version is not the perfect version. I don't weigh and measure my dough and cut it individually into four perfect segments. I just look at it and I kind of judge. If you want to weigh yours and cut it into, and make it into, you know, that's fine. But dish with does not do that. Because I figure if I'm a little bit light on one day, I'm a little bit heavier on the other day, it all works out in the wash. So I just kind of eyeball it to four little triangles. But again, if you want, then by all means, that's what you do. I don't get very um, crazy like that. I also don't get crazy with adding a little bit of extra flour. Some people be like, oh no, we can't add extra flour, so add extra points. Honestly, I really don't feel that way. It's a little bit of flour on the board. And let's face it, I left a little bit of flour in the bowl too, because it just doesn't always absorb it. So it's a little bit sticky still. So we want to add at least a tablespoon of flour to our board because we don't want it to stick. Spread it out. Now, you're not going to use all this flour. I guarantee you're not going to use all this flour. But you want to have it there. So just pat it in there. It's really all you're going to use. It's like your insurance flour. But don't get crazy with, oh my gosh, I might add another half a point. It's really not that bad. So I have a silicone rolling pin. I got mine at Big Lots. I love a silicone rolling pin for two ingredients, though. I just think, so I roll it in the flour. I just think it helps not stick. That's why I put one in my giveaway, because this is like the bomb diggity of rolling pins. So you just roll it. It's not the best cutting board to use. It's gonna slide. I thought it would have been a better one to use. So you're just gonna roll it. See how nice it rolls? And look, most of the flour is still there. Now you could stuff your calzone sweet, savory. If you do sweet, I would uh, um, say add some monk fruit sweetener to your dough. You want your dough with maybe a little bit of cinnamon and vanilla, so it would be really sweet. Let's see, I'm a, I am a one handed rolling pin person, but yes, look at that. You can make you could do this in six pieces, there'll be two points each. You could make little bombs, you can make them and put them in the air fryer, like fill them with whatever you want. Um, we watch her girl, Wendy, used to always put beans and cheese in hers. Now, this is going to puff up when you bake it. 
it might like oh my gosh this gonna it will puff up when you bake it i promise you can air fry you can put it in your oven whichever you want whatever floats your boat now i have eggs already ready to go you don't want to overstuff it because you know this is three points worth of dough and you just want to get it as thin as you can it will tear because remember this is just yogurt and flour i think the egg makes a little bit more elastic as well you see how easy that was and look yeah i saw all the flour so don't get crazy with flour don't get crazy with flour. Repeat after me. I will not get crazy with flour. All right. That's perfect. So we're going to put our fillings right down the middle. Then we're going to seal it up. Let me go grab my fillings. And I'm also going to show you a little tip. Once, if, if you wanted, this could be parchment paper. So you'd roll it and then just transfer it, dust it with all the extra flour and put it on your pan. I am going to be rogue here and put it on my paper. I don't have any parchment. I'm out of parchment. So I have a foil lined baking sheet. Now I'm not using my air fryer today, but you absolutely could bake with an air fryer. I'm just going to slide it on here. Because the less you have to move it, the less tears you will have. So there we go. Look at that. It's ready to go. So I'm cooking mine in my toaster oven, by the way. Oh yeah, I'm going a little bit old school today. Because, you know, just showing you, you could do things with the equipment you have. You don't have to have the fancy air fryers and stuff like that. You can use a toaster oven. I do it all the time. So I'm going to put, today my cheese of choice is a Laughing Cow Asiago. I just felt like the Asiago. Now, you could use any cheese you want. Just remember, you have to account for the points for it. So the cheese is totally up to you. Any shredded cheese works really good in here. Velveeta Shreds works good in here. So I'm just going to get that bad boy. Oh, it didn't tear really well today. I'm not going to get too pretty on how it's going to look inside because it's all going to melt. And this did not open well. Some of my cheese is not coming out. Hmm. Belly wants to use back of the spoon and just gently push your cheese. And even if you wanted, just dot it. It's going to melt when it cooks. So you don't really have to get, this, get too fancy with it. It's going to all melt perfectly. So you just have to dot it. Again, don't stress out in the kitchen. I think a lot of us try to be perfect with everything, including our food. You know what? It's all going to be covered up, and you're never even going to know what's in there. Okay, I'm going to do Canadian bacon. It's up to you how many slices. One slice, you don't have to count. It's a zero-point food. But up to, I think this one, Brenna, three slices for one point. So, so if, if you're going to use one, what I would do is just... Do that. Cut it in half like that. So I'm going to do one today. And then we have our scrambled eggs. You could do a fried egg if you wanted. That would be totally fine. Any eggs you want. This is your breakfast calzone. And if eggs are zero point foods, you can load this bad boy up. You could put some fresh herbs in here. Basil would be so good on top of this. Spinach. Ooh. Oh, we have spinach. Okay, grab some spinach. Hang, peeps. Yeah, because, you know, again, why not? I wouldn't put too much because you don't want it to tear, but a few leaves on top. Why not? There we go. Beautiful is that. I hate when they have the big stems. I need to buy the baby spinach because this is ridiculous. This is dumb. So we're just going to pop some of these stems off. So look at that. Yep. All right. Now comes the fun part, closing it up. That is why I like doing it on parchment. So you just bring it up. Bring it, like I said, it's not going to be perfect. You just need to close it. And it will stick to itself because it's sticky. Just close it up. And if you want it, if you had a little bit more dough on the end, you could pull a little bit off and put it over top. Okay. Again, this is your breakfast. You don't have to make it perfect. Now, you could put an egg wash on top of this if you choose. I just spray mine. It's, you know, like I said, no muss, no fuss. I don't get too crazy, but you could use an egg wash. Look at that. You just created a calzone. 
and I do. I use the butter flavored spray. I know. And you just I'm running out really low. You spray it. Gives it a nice little crusty exterior. You can put little sesame seeds to make it fancy. You could put. Oh, I know. I know what we're gonna put on top. Hold on. Hold the door. I'm gonna put my Kinder's blend on top. A little bit of salt, pepper, and garlic. Because you can put everything bagel on the top. Again, this is yours. You do what you want. So I'm going to bake this. I can't remember how long. I will let you know when we come back. Mm, this looks so good. Oh, I'm so excited for breakfast this morning. Thank you for reminding me about this because I haven't made one of these in a while. But yes, and when you're done, you can freeze them. Wrap them and freeze them so they're ready for you for meal prep. This is why it's a meal prep video. You could prep these. You could prep four of them. Easy peasy. All right. I was also asked to make a strawberry shortcake. So since we have a bun here, I'm going to show you how to make this three-point bun into a strawberry shortcake bun. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it in our bowl. We're going to add a little few things to it because it's not, a, you know, I know shortcake isn't always a sweet bun, but I like my shortcake a sweet bun. So I'm going to take about a tablespoon of monk fruit, throw it on top. A little bit of vanilla extract, just a dot, because we want to get it mixed in. Just a dot. And a little bit of cinnamon. Because I want this to be, like I said, more of a dessertish type bun. Not a lot. And I will tell you, Vietnamese cinnamon is the bomb. So I'm just going to get that incorporated into our, our little bake the bun. This way it'll be a little bit of a savory bun. I'm just going to mix it in, that's all. And with this, there's no muss and fuss because I'm not really going to roll it. So I don't care how sticky it gets. So I'm just going to click. Smells amazing. <laughs> I will tell you. So I'm just, just going to pat it down and make it into a biscuit. This is going to bake. And then when it comes out, we're going to cut it in half, put a little fat-free Ready Whip and some strawberries. I'm telling you, what's the most it's going to be? Four points? If I even give a point for the cream? That's still, for a dessert, is a really good option. So we're going to do it to two of them. Because you know, somebody in my house is going to want one. So we'll do the same thing. Tablespoon of monk fruit. Splash of vanilla extract. And a little bit of cinnamon. To your base dough. Do you see what I mean how two ingredient dough is so versatile that you could do many things with it? I will link, um, I did a riff on a Panera Bread bagel, the cinnamon crunch bagel. It's absolutely phenomenal. What I did was I got some oats, toasted them really well, add a little bit of monk fruit, some cinnamon, and I coated, I just dipped this in egg and then dipped it in that mixture and it coated the outside. It was phenomenal. Oh, so phenomenal. And the amount of oats that got on each bagel wasn't even worth counting. Because what'd you get? I'm looking, I got a table of oats on my each bagel. Get it all mixed up. Oh, there you go. Two buns. Waiting for my calzone to get done. So I'll put those bad boys in the oven. All right, she baked for about 15 minutes. Keep your eye on it because every oven is different. But look at that. I mean, look at that. It is just a beautiful thing. And I'm going to plate it up with maybe, I don't think I have any salsa. Oh, I do. I think I have salsa, Greek yogurt, and avocado on top because, you know, why not? Yes, I'm adding a few points, but you know what? Those points are not like you're eating candy and cookie points. These are, yes, a little bit fats, but they're fats that you need. So don't ever feel bad about putting a little bit of avocado. And you can get a lot for zero to one point of avocado. So look at that. I mean, it's everything. It's our, and it's not perfect. You know what? Your food does not have to be perfect. You are not on the Food Network. It is beautiful. Look at that. And the more you do it, the better you will become at working with two ingredient dough. I will tell you that. But I need to eat this because I just can't. Oh. All right. So this is how I'm serving it with some pico for zero, zero point amount of. There you have the finished calzone. I topped it with some pico, one point of avocado, and some non-fat Greek yogurt. So remember, what are the points? Three for the dough, one for the cheese. 
and one for the avocado. So it is a three, four, five point breakfast. Again, you don't have to put the avocado. You could put less. You could put a zero point amount. I am just choosing to use that much. But look how good this looks. This is how you do WW right, people. So thank you for suggesting this on meal prep. I'm so excited. All right, we're going to have some. I mean, seriously. I can't. I can't tell you how good this is. <laughs> how good it looks. But I want to show you the underneath. Perfectly baked. Absolutely delicious. Oh. You could put sausage in here. Whatever you want. This is your calzone. Like I said, you could do, do a, you know, this is a breakfast. We can do a lunch one. You could put deli ham and cheese. Um, you can do peppers and onions, um, chicken sausage, um, pepperoni, turkey pepperoni. You can do it. this base, how to make the, the rolling it out. You can fill it with however you want. I just happen to like breakfast mostly, most of all. But again, it's your world, boo. You do you. You put it in there when you want and you enjoy it. I always say it does take a little bit of work to, to work this plan. But you're getting food like this. It's worth it. And meal prep these ahead of time. Keep them in the freezer. Pop them in the toaster oven in the morning. In the air fryer. You're ready and good to go. So I'm going to go finish this. All right. Here are the sweetened biscuit buns out of the oven. Now, I'm going to give you a little tip because I, you know, I'll try to, you know, get all your questions answered on a video. But sometimes people have found that the inner inside isn't quite as done maybe you cooked it too high but you know what when you're going to use this you're going to cut it in half and toast it anyway so if you, if yours is a little underdone it will definitely finish in the toaster so don't really worry about it don't get too stressed over this look how good that looks oh i can't wait to make some strawberry shortcakes i'm super excited well it's the little things that get me excited because you can have strawberry shortcake and that's exciting on plan all right, time to assemble our strawberry shortcake. Here's the biscuit we had yesterday. I cut it in half and I toasted it. I wanted it warm. You don't have to, you don't want to. So in my bowl, I got some strawberries that I just put with a little monk fruit. So they get a little bit juicy. But what I did to it, so as you know, I put a little of this pecan praline balsamic just to drizzle. I know. Seriously, I know. We're just gonna, let's see. There, better view. So we have it on our plate. We have our strawberries with our reduction. <laughs> just gonna place a little, as much as you want on top. I'll get some of that juice. Look at this. Yeah. And the only thing I have on hand is fat-free Cool Whip. A matter of the ready whip, so we're just gonna put a little dollop. It's not even, you know, that much to worry about. A couple little tablespoons of that. And I'm gonna put some twigs dust on there. There you go. Strawberry shortcake with two ingredient dough. There you go. Doesn't it look? absolutely yummy. I mean, let's have a taste because I don't know. I think it's going to be rather good. Just a thought. All right. Two tablespoons of this uh, fat-free Cool Whip is one point. I think two tablespoons of the Ready Whip is zero. Not sure, but I'm willing to take it. Four point dessert. I'm all for that. So let's, let's just pick it up and go for it, shall we? That is perfect. That is the best biscuit you've ever made. Four points. Four freaking points. Shut the front door. I'm going to go finish this. All right, it's summertime in our house, and we always usually have a picture of this cold brew 
in my fridge. <clears throat> cold brew is nothing more than coffee made in the refrigerator. You can make it with any grinds. It's You won't believe how simple it is. Dunkin' and all those fancy coffee shops charge you a little bit more for cold brew, but honestly, it's just coffee sitting in the refrigerator for 24 hours. So I had a fancy cold brew pitcher that I purchased with Wins at a credit card last summer because we were making it so much. Um, but you could use any container and grinds. All you need is a container, coffee grinds, and water. That's all you need. But I have a fancy dancy one. But in here, I'll have everything listed on my website. I have the filter and it has one and a third cups of any coffee grinds of your choice. You name it, you can use as far as I know. Lock that in. So to them, I'm going to put four cups of cold filtered water right over the grinds. That's one cup and this is a two cup. Another cup, make four cups. Let it see through. And you can make flavored cold brews, plain cold brews. And that's it. You put the lid on, and she will sit in the fridge for 24 hours. Now, tomorrow, I will pull the grind, little grinds out, and she's ready to go. And you have a base. This is be, will be your cold brew base. You only need one third cup of this base. You mix one third cup of this base with two thirds cup of your favorite milk. Whether you use milk, whether you use half and half, whether you use almond milk, whatever. So, two thirds cup of that to one thirds cup of this base. You mix it, and that's it. I usually put it in a little um, magic bullet with a little bit of ice. Um, sometimes we put flavoring, cinnamon extracts, skinny syrups, whatever the boys feel like. And that's, you know, they have it cold. You could put more ice to make it more like a frozen iced coffee. You could just put a couple just to chill it and it won't be so um, thick. But I've made a smoothie with this base, a coffee smoothie, yes. I didn't drink it, you know that. But yeah, funny, funny, fun fact that I don't like coffee, but I found a cold brew to make for them. Do I not get a medal for that? So that's how easy, like I said, I used to make it in a container, a simple container. And I would drain it with cheesecloth or a coffee filter, drain the grinds out. I would do it a few times and then keep that base. So you don't really need this fancy thing. But since we made it so much and I saw it for my wins, it didn't cost me anything. I thought, how fun. So... That is cold brew coffee. Easy. Actually, when I learned how to do it, I'm like, that's it? That's it? Yeah, that's it. All right, it's a day later. And look, we have cold brew. That's why I said you can't mess this up. It's so incredibly simple. When I realized how simple this was, I don't even drink coffee. But you know what? In the summer, the, even in the winter, the boys really like this. Um, they love making smoothies or just frozen coffees, iced coffees. You can do it either way. We're just gonna make an iced coffee today. You just pull it. Now, if you just use a container, what you would do is just drain it into like a paper towel, a coffee filter, cheesecloth, and get the grinds out. This little handy dandy thing, I just have to pull it out, and we are ready to go. We throw this in the trash, and we have our cold brew base. It'll last probably in your fridge for easily 10 days. That doesn't last that long in this house. All right, this is how easy this is. You have your cup and you have your coffee base. Now, it is one third cup of coffee base to two thirds cup of liquid. Could be water if you just want plain coffee. But if you're gonna have a latte, which most times the guys here do, is you put milk of choice. You could use whole milk, whatever milk, whole milk, 1%, 2%, half and half. I'm using cashew milk, almond milk, any milk you want. There we go. So it's two to one. Now this is just an iced coffee. So he wanted caramel. So we're going to put some caramel skinny syrup in there. Because you know, that's why we roll here. Nice glug of that. 
and you get your little handy dandy whipper. You could, now if you want to make it frozen, you can throw ice in here and throw it in your little blender, but we're just doing ice today, so we're not going to do it frozen with corn. Whip it up. This will actually make a really nice foam with this, because all these milks foam really well. You can make a really nice foam. I'm going to put a few cubes of ice because, you know, it's summertime, so we don't want it to be absolutely hot. So we'll put a couple of cubes, which is fine. Now, this is how we get a little bit of fun here in the Dish with the House. Some caramel sugar-free syrup. Because, you know, it does do. And a little bit of the Twix dust on top. And we get our little straw. Oh, I messed up my top. A little bit more Twix dust. And a little bit of cream. I don't have much left anyway. So there you have it. Easy, easy, easy cold brew coffee latte. Well, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this little two ingredient dough duo in my cold brew. It was fun to film this. I, had, I forgot all about the calzone. And we were talking at the live. And if you don't know, we go live Sunday through Thursday here on the channel for the 7 p.m. Eastern time, weight loss chit chat. And we share ideas, recipes, friendship, and all that fun stuff. So it's kind of like your daily meeting. So if you're, lack, if you're lacking, you know, connection with weight loss peeps in a meeting, come join us. You might find what you're looking for with us. We'd love to have you. And it reminded me about the calzone. And I thought I had filmed it, but I could not for the life of me find it. But hey, it's always good to bring up an old favorite. And I forgot how much I enjoyed that calzone. It was delicious. And then we all talked about strawberry shortcake and how easy I transformed that biscuit into a strawberry shortcake. You saw how easy that quick that came together. So again, and I do make my tuna grudo a little bit different than some people. It's just what I like. And I feel that for me, the yeast adds a taste and the egg adds a beautiful lightness. So that's why I do it. It's, it has a little more protein, so win-win for me. So if you enjoyed this little meal prep, let me know with a big old thumbs up and let me know down in the comments below if there's something you wanna try, if there's something you want me to meal prep. You know, we'll see, we'll get to it, we'll get to it, you know, all in due time. But I thank you so much for watching and supporting my channel, it means everything. We got a lot of new subscribers here, so welcome everyone. And, you know, make yourself at home. There's some old videos to watch. There's tons here. Everything's in categories in the playlist. So check out a playlist and what, you, what you're interested in. And you can go have at it on a boring, rainy day like we have today. Yeah, it's bad. Oh, I hope that wasn't too fast. I try, not, I try not to move. I hate when people move when they're talking because it makes me nauseous. So I try to be very diligent about that not moving too much because I know it makes me sick. So... So that's it. Thanks again for watching. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, hit that subscribe button, join us. And again, thumbs up's always appreciated. So we will dish another day. So have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye, my lovelies.